Hi there and welcome to another episode of the 33 Fuel vlog. My name is Warren, I'm one of the co-founders at 33 Fuel and it gives me great pleasure to be your host today for this conversation with nutritionist Matt Gardner. Um, as former viewers and regular viewers will know, at 33 Fuel we are all about high performance, high health and that's something we express most obviously uh, in store at 33fuel.com through our high performance natural sports nutrition products which deliver all of the good stuff that you need to take yourself to the next level and come with none of the downsides. We use no fillers, we use no flavorings, we use no sweeteners, there is nothing we use that isn't food. This is very high performance stuff, it gives you everything you need, it doesn't give you what you don't. So that's where our mission begins but frankly that is one expression of a mission. We're about helping athletes become the best they can be. And the content that we share through our, our podcast, our vlog, uh, on our blog, on our emails, on our social channels, there is oodles of it out there. And it's all about giving athletes the best possible tools, athletes of all levels, that is, the best possible tools to take themselves mentally, physically, nutritionally uh, to the best that they can be. And this conversation with Matt, particularly in this time of coronavirus lockdown, is a really key part of that. Because not only is Matt a very well, uh, highly experienced nutritionist, uh, he's also a great athlete himself. He's run a number of ultra marathons. Uh, he's also looked after various training and program, um, training and nutrition programs for uh, major companies like uh, North Face and also for Nuffield Health. Um, but boiling it down here, what we're looking at is in this show is nutritional strategies for managing, uh, surviving, but most importantly, thriving through this period of coronavirus lockdown. Because such a change in so many areas of our lives, work uh, routines have been shifted, uh, schooling routines have been shifted, home routines have been shifted, training is all over the place. Uh, how do you manage the, the sustenance, the nourishment, the calories. How do you manage uh, to look after that with good food? Where should you start? How do you manage to keep on track with your weight, whether you're looking to lose, gain, or maintain, uh, wherever you're at? How do you manage all of those things uh, and do it uh, sensibly and enjoyably uh, in this challenging time? And it's worth remembering that these are, fortunately for most of us, first world problems. Uh, lockdown is a big, big change to our lives. But um, if all we got to do is stay home, hit the turbo trainer, uh, work remotely, and watch Netflix while eating good food, that's pretty much <laughs> life's a peach, to be honest. Um, I'm not making light of it where there will be serious consequences, very sadly, for some people. For the majority of us, the reality of this is it's, uh, it's a different time. Um, but our aim here at 33 Fuel is to really look at this as a time to thrive, a time to reflect, uh, a time to be able to hit pause on certain elements of your life that don't normally stop, a time to be able to see how do we come out of this stronger. And this, this conversation with Matt is a key, key stepping stone in that. So if you want to look at how you make your nutrition better, how do you really uh, enjoy your food and balance it for your training requirements, your life requirements in this unique time, well, this conversation is, is for you. So look, I'll stop rambling on now, other than to say that if you are uh, passing by 33fuel.com to stock up on your natural sports nutrition, uh, we are shipping open for business as normal. We've taken a number of contingency plans to keep supply lines open, uh, so we have everything in stock. And it's all available for safe delivery to your door. So by all means, do uh, order away. But not before you have enjoyed this conversation about nutrition, immune support, managing the lockdown, uh, morning routines and more with nutritionist Matt Gardner. So Matt, uh, brilliant to have you back on the show. Thanks for making the huge commute in, uh, in socially uh, distanced, responsible manner, um, being here on a, on a Skype hookup all the way from Warwickshire. Mate, it's really good to be back on the show and I'm really looking forward to riffing on, you know, all things nutrition and catching up with yourself and um, yeah, it's really good to be back. Thanks for having me. I uh, know, it, it, it's great to have you here and uh, for a minute I thought we were in a bit of a strange situation because clearly 
Last time we met, you were based quite literally a stone's throw from where I'm sat right now in central London, and uh, you've made the bail out of the country. Yeah, I snuck out. We um, obviously, yeah, we were around the corner from each other, but uh, after we started cracking down, um, we just thought, you know, look, let's come out and um, we're lucky enough to have a bit of space out here. So I'm at, yeah, I'm at my fiance's parents house and um a bit of dog walking breaking up the day getting some sunlight in the eyeballs and yeah just trying to stay out of the way and obviously stay home and we thought it'd be better to do it in the countryside so yeah we're really lucky to be able to do that no i, I think that's a great point and you've already inadvertently or just professionally set the ball rolling because there's our first topic of the day i mean we're going to be sort of chewing around all things nutrition, performance, and, and with a specific spin on uh, immune function versus training load, um, because we are in, in coronavirus semi-lockdown times. We're in a strange and, let's just say, a new situation. Um, but it's a situation that clearly none of us would ever have chosen this. Um, it's difficult for many. It's challenging for all. And it's going to be very upsetting and tragic for some. But for the majority... This is a chance for quite a reset. There's a lot of opportunity hidden in here um, for people to discover new ways of working, maybe even discover new careers, people to uh, spend more time with their families. Uh, not going to be a good thing for everyone, but certainly uh, I think for some people to, to spend that time to invest a little more time in themselves and time for a bit of reflection maybe. But as this new rhythm settles in, uh, that whole training nutrition and specifically with the virus around immune function maintaining that in the face of it all is going to be key so that that's sort of our our ballpark arena here but i say you've already inadvertently started the ball rolling vitamin d if we're going to be indoors a lot um how important is vitamin d and where should people be getting it how, how would you advise people go about about that and where would you sort of place its importance in the overall picture mm. Yeah, it's definitely it's an interesting. We know that it supports with energy production, uh, its role in bone health, and obviously overall immune function. So I think from a food first point of view, there's little bits of vitamin D in things like oily fish, mushrooms. But really, if someone listening to this wanted to actually increase their internal levels of vitamin D, you know, you need sunlight. You need sunlight on your skin. Or obviously, if you're indoors, um, it's, it's looking at supplementation. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you go out and you start popping pills. It has to be individualized. And um, yeah, so if I was working with someone and they might have come, I don't know, from the GP or they might have had a health assessment or they might have gone out and just wanted to determine their vitamin D number, um, then that's something that uh, can obviously help them with a bit of a kind of supplementation protocol, really. Um, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean everyone has to do that. Um, but I often think it's it's something that uh, it is discussed in the winter. Um, but then again, it comes down to your exposure. You know, even if you are getting some sunlight, you know, it depends on the certain time of year, depends on your skin pigmentation. So, yeah, I think to try and answer this uh, question and not ramble on too much, it's very important. You can test for it. And often I think people believe, you know, they can eat foods that have vitamin D written on a packet. But really, you know, to drive it up, it's it's sunlight or supplementation. So with the, I mean, supplementation, I mean, that's a whole, I know we could do a whole show on, uh, you know, how do you find a quality vitamin, what the differences are. But I think as, as a baseline in an overview, uh, you know, as a backstop, if you're taking some vitamin D, that's not going to be a bad thing right now. But similarly, if you're allowed out to exercise, well, get outside and, and try and get that sun on your skin. As the temperatures come up a bit, that's that's a value. And as from everything I've understood about it, and do correct me if I'm wrong, that skin exposure sunlight is the best possible way to, to get some vitamin D into you. And it, it doesn't have to be sun worshipping. It's literally sunlight on the skin. Yeah, definitely. And then obviously there's some interesting things coming about Alien rhythm, uh, sleep, mood, you know, getting the time um, outside, sunlight in the eyeballs is a phrase I use often when I'm working with people, um, you know, obviously from the vitamin D, from the uh, immune function point of view, from the energy production point of view, 
you know, we've already kind of talked a bit about that, but yeah, just kind of setting your body's rhythms, uh, supporting sleep, supporting mood, um, and all of those, uh, you know, absolute cornerstones of uh, your health and well-being. And obviously, at the moment, mate, we're we're finding out as as uh, you know a population that health is wealth at the moment because everyone has just been stripped back, haven't they? You know, there's no kind of people going out, flashy stuff, all that kind of thing. It's literally if you're well. You know, you're seen as doing, doing really, uh, you know, really good things because there's a lot of people that are, are quite unwell at the moment. Yeah, and no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, he- health is wealth is one of those things that almost sounds like a marketing slogan just because it rhymes, but never is it more obvious right now that looking after yourself and and the value of that it, it's something that I think a lot of people only notice when it's gone. Uh, then mm-hmm. you're going to find out how expensive it really can be. Um, but for most of us to, in this period, get that focus of, hang on, actually looking after myself, putting, it's not just about performing better in your sport today or recovering better for your workout tomorrow. It's quite literally about putting quality of life on the back end of your life. No, no one can legislate for being hit by a bus and, you know, whatever it may, may come. And, And there's certainly hundred year olds who say they've smoked every day. They're probably an outlier in the same way very healthy people drop dead of random heart attacks in in the middle of races so i think at those ends of the spectrum you can't use those as blueprints but generally if you make smart lifestyle choices you're going to race better recover better and you're going to add quality to those end years of your life which i think is just that is a value beyond all Mm, definitely look you know we, we both work in that kind of area of performance and um, at the end of the day, you know, if if you can't rock up, most people listening to this are going to be very focused on their exercise. And, you know, we both know that if you can't turn up because you're unwell, um, you can't elicit the stimulus and, and, and you can't get better. And for me as a, as a performance nutritionist, you know, that was kind of uh, put into me from day one when I started studying years ago. Um, how can you keep the people well around you? Yes, we can get into some of the small variable benefits, the top of the pyramid stuff. Um, but, you know, if you're athlete or your team or uh, some of the people you might be standing up and speaking in front of at a club, you know, a lot of uh, probably cyclists or runners and things listening to this. Um, you know, if you can't rock up, you can't elicit the stimulus. And that's obviously going to help you with with performance. So it's, it's everything, you know, performance, um, peak trying to do the best you can you know you have to stay well in yourself and then you can get into the nitty-gritty around the nutrition and the training for adaptation but you have to actually get there and be there first yeah i, I couldn't i couldn't agree more if to use a uh, maybe a, a financial uh, comparison you can't invest until you've set up the capital in the first place to invest with um and you know if you're overdrawn i.e ill then you definitely can't be going and doing any investment so about building that that capital, building a strong, solid base of capital to invest in your fitness and your performance. From from your side of things, what do you see as the the key pillars of maintaining healthy immune function in the face of both training load and the situation we find ourselves in now with coronavirus, where you know everyone would like that to be as strong as it can be. You know, we can't grow a second immune system, but we can max out the one we have. So. Where, what do you see as the key pillars for building that? Mm. Yeah, I think obviously, you know, the top nutrition, sleep, hydration, like you said there, sunlight. And um, obviously people are going to have to be creative at the moment because um, having interests, having a kind of drive to get out of bed, you know, the hobby side of things. A lot of people will listen to this that obviously fill that with exercise or they might have some kind of creative work project. Some of those things might have changed a little bit. But, um, yeah, I think it to bring things back to basics, it is looking into, right, you know, especially from the hydration point of view, um, you know, are you drinking regularly? Are you waking up and hydrating? Are you uh, urinating clear before some of your training sessions? And I think something that people can dive into, because obviously people want kind of personal recommendations, just take your body weight in kilos and times it by 30, that's a really easy place to start. And then that can give you a kind of amount of litres to drink a day in relation to your body weight. And then if you're someone that's quite exercise minded and you are, you know, a heavy sweater, 
then obviously it's looking to replace those fluids too because you might be listening to this and you've got more time and, and you're getting up and you're training in the morning now before work and then kind of mid-morning or early afternoon you're you're a bit like why have I not got as much energy you know you might reach for something to eat or um, you know you may have to take yourself away from your task if that's uh, in front of a screen or writing or whatever but you actually might only be a few hundred milliliters away from um, you know sorting things out in terms of in terms of your your kind of perceived energy levels and and um, everything in that sense so I think the water side of things uh, really really important um, and yeah especially if you're listening to this and you are moving more it's often the first thing that's that's neglected because if you're working from home, you might be out of a routine and, and you might not be drinking enough. No, that, that, that's a great point because on the one hand, uh, for those of us who are more used to working from home or working remotely or kind of on the hoof, um, being in the kitchen or near the kitchen at home is a lifesaver for managing quality nutrition. And you, know, you can cook every meal. You've got water literally on tap, funnily enough. Um, but if you're not used to that environment, it can feel a bit strange maybe. If you're used to, well, you know, I go out for my lunch from here at this time and I, I, there's the water cooler there to top up my bottle that's in my desk and, you know, coffee is at 11, whatever it may be, could be easy to get off that. And just on that hydration point, what was the, run me by the, the equation that you mentioned again about body weight for calculating, give or take, a sort of ballpark arena for a personal water recommendation? Yeah, so obviously it's not set in stone, but it's just rough. So if I just do, you know, if I'm 87 kilos times that by 30, you know, that, that gives me roughly, you know, 2.6 litres a day to consume. Right, um, so that's so a litres figure that it's giving you as a total. Yeah, so if I, so if I worked out, you know, 2,610, so I haven't just worked that out in my head, I've got a calculator here, and I'll just, uh, you know, put that into litres. So, so I'll, I'll try and tend to drink, set that in, try and tend to drink two and a half litres, and then I know if I'm doing whatever, you know, an hour run or something before or after work, I'll try and square away roughly, you know, how much I'm I'm losing in terms of sweat there. So, you know, these things take time. You don't have to do it straight away, but it's something that, um, you know, I'll, I'll sit at that as my kind of baseline and then I'll I'll know roughly from kind of a few years similar to yourself while I'm training and just weighing yourself before or after sessions that might be half an hour or an hour and then you can see what you've lost in terms of, you know, sweat. And because um, I'm quite a heavy sweater, so that's a lot more important to me. Fluid levels are really important to me, um, especially if I'm doing certain training sessions, you know, in the morning if I'm waking up and I need to get the fluids in or in, in the evening if I obviously haven't quite drank enough and I'm doing some time on feet. Um, you know, that's really important to me. So I'll, I'll kind of roughly know how much I'll sweat 30 minutes, kind of springtime now. And then obviously if it's an hour and, you know, we're not trying to get out for too much more than an hour at the moment, aren't we, in terms of the, the training around isolation. So it's, uh, yeah, it obviously goes without saying, drinking, making sure you're urinating clear through the day. But if you want it from a performance point of view, take that calculation and then you can easily weigh yourself in and out of certain training sessions um, to determine your kind of basic sweat rate, really. And, you, you know, you could get lost in some of these companies kind of selling their uh, bespoke electrolyte products and stuff too but I think you know you're, you're obviously a smart person if you're listening to this and, and, and you're following um, Warren and the, and, and the company so you know if you're tasting salt on your sweat that might be a, an indication for you to you know consume something with some 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 natural sea salt in afterwards for a meal or you know you may need to start looking at, at uh, salt tablets or, or using you know products and things with sodium in which i know some of yours have mate so um yeah i hope hopefully that hasn't gone off on too much of a tangent but i think it's taking something basic like hydration looking at it from a health is wealth standpoint and a performance standpoint for cognition through the day and then obviously angling it towards you know what what do you need to do to support your own performance and your own rehydration program um because obviously if you're listening to this you'll be training very differently to to, to ourselves and, and other listeners as well. No, I could, couldn't agree more. Not, not a tangent at all. I, I think a lot of value in there, really breaking down the, the basics of hydration. I mean, so much of our body is water anyway. So much of our planet is water. Um, it quite literally is life. Um, but doing it in a way that's sensible. So, you know, just making sure that generally 
you're urinating clear during the day and, and when you're not well maybe you need a little more um, being conscious of that exercise load and even from my own point of view you know having been involved around nutrition and performance for so long one of my own bits of taking my own medicine uh, in the face of what's going on with corona and, and just to sort of cover the immune bases is hydration for the simple fact that your saliva and your mucus is effectively part of your barrier and part of your immune system against external uh, infection. Therefore, maintaining, you know, if you've got a dry mouth, then that saliva barrier is not going to be working as well as it could be. So nothing to go crazy about, but just another side benefit of making sure the hydration is is topped up. Yeah, you're totally right. And I think if um, someone's interested in linked to this, some performance nutrition, um, especially in sports like cycling and things, will actually test that secretory IGA response mate. So they'll take saliva samples um, and it's something to look at. And, uh, you know, they might predict uh, an, an athlete's kind of status in terms of, you know, are they um, approaching uh, potentially getting a cold or, or that kind of overtraining? I know we're going to get into that in a minute in terms of um, training, overtraining, etc. cetera. But, um, Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's very interesting, and obviously you can you can go as deep as you like into this kind of stuff, but it really comes back down to what are you doing on a daily basis, and and you can learn all, all these things, but it's just about implementing them and, and getting into that new routine. If you are someone that's listening to this and you don't usually work at home, yeah, no, quite quite right. So moving on from from the water, I mean. Um... Clearly, uh, we have seen our, our, our shops uh, go somewhat nuts in the last uh, few weeks and uh, liable to be for the forthcoming future in that some of the more, let's just say, in the same way that we've focused on how important our health are, is some of the more frivolous or exotic items in the supermarket are being cast aside to make more space for basics, whether they be pasta or toilet roll. Um, I even have heard from a, a friend of a friend who runs a, a shower business of all things and Amazon have been requesting them to delist their showers. They need to make more space in the warehouse for pasta and toilet roll. So, you know, this, this, is, uh, this is rolling out across the country. But basics are, are going to be in the store cupboard. The irony is fresh fruit and veg is the one thing that you can get really easily, assuming you can get into a shop because no one's stockpiling courgettes and bananas. Uh, yeah. That's not, that's not going to happen. Um, from your point of view, what what does a what does a good baseline nutrition plan or goal look like, and where where are the food groups and the ingredients you're looking to 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 build that from? Mm. I think you nailed it on the head, and obviously you can't jump out every day and get fresh. Things about being smart and having to prioritise fruits and vegetables, especially the vegetables that grow above the ground. Um, as often as you can and um, you know I'm not saying people need to eat uh, vegetables and things at breakfast obviously they can play around with uh, fruits and I know if you're kind of making a bit of a modified you know healthier cooked breakfast you could look at spinach and tomatoes and mushrooms and things there but um, yeah it is still trying to get a variety of, of fruits and vegetables especially the vegetables that grow above the ground into your into your dietary pattern so looking around your main meals you know lunch, lunch and dinner or, or tea or whatever you want to call it um, and you can still DIY that by using some frozen produce too um, so that's something to think about so you know it might it might not always be the best because obviously if you can get local seasonal fresh produce then the nutritional value may be higher but you know you can still look at things like your, your your frozen spinach your mixed vegetables things like your your cauliflowers and things you can look at your peas and, and and beans and and all those kind of things and sweet corn and then obviously you can get those those dark um you know really nutrient dense berries um that you can keep in in the freezer and things too and i think uh, you know that would be a really good place to start so trying to find a variety of color in those fruits and vegetables you know mixing up some of the the fresh with some frozen too so obviously um, you know the freedom of going out as often and, and and getting certain foods as maybe it's not been taken away from us but obviously we've just been asked to go out kind of once a week or something like that now and then I, and then I think it's just uh, it's going it's going from there and obviously you know we can get into things like protein um, and and whole food fats you know the other macronutrients but I think 
you know, you're going to be picking up fiber there. You're going to be picking up energy, um, especially if you're listening to this and you are training. From my point of view as a performance nutritionist, it's continuing to meet energy needs and, you know, not going too low carb. Uh, because we know that if you are supporting your energy needs, so eating enough calories to sustain your weight and, you know, using carbohydrate rich foods, if you are training um, often to kind of keep that that level of glycogen in your muscles and your liver nice and high, um, you, you tend to get injured less. And um, yeah, you tend to get less of the kind of uh, reported upper respiratory kind of tract infections and things too. So um yeah, the kind of conversation around what's healthy, but I know a lot of your listeners are very active as well. So I think it's just be careful, you know, you don't just because you're not necessarily moving as much to go to the office or, you know, to go on your daily tasks and things like that. Some people may really diet down, but may com- completely keep their, you know, their training at home if it's home equipment or, you know, running around frantically like you've said there. So just be careful, I think. Um, not not to to restrict certain foods. Try to keep the variety in there. Obviously, within reason, it's all about accessibility. Um, and just be wary of not going too low carb and reducing too many calories too quickly. I think I think that's a great point because the overtraining or uh, post exercise immunosuppression can be. Uh, you know, we, we can dig into this in a little more detail, but it can be something that people see as only relevant to their training. But the truth is, if you are not fueled for your training properly, you're already on uh, you know, one step down against those forces when they come in to hit you. Therefore, being able to absorb your training is partly to do with being properly fueled. And I think the simple point for a lot of people is if you are now working at home and you are used to commuting, then your basic daily movement. Let's see, imagine your training hasn't changed. Your no walk to the train station, no walk for a sandwich at lunchtime, no walk back to the station, whatever it may be. You'd be amazed. Like 10,000 steps in a day is easy doing a commute. 10,000 steps in a day when you're working from home is impossible unless you're conscious about it. So you could quite literally have cut your energy expenditure in half by working at home, not getting those steps, but still training. So it's being mindful of where you are on that scale. I mean, what, what, what's your advice to people that, around that sort of difference or the juxtaposition of daily movement, which may be really quite reduced in a home environment, and, and training which could be the, the same or perhaps even more intense? Who knows? Yeah, exactly. I think, look, it's being smart. And that, that kind of term, fuel work quite um, really interesting. So if you ask someone that, like you said, your daily movements really come down and you might be on the other end of the spectrum and you are worried about overeating, um, then, you know, it's it's looking at things, stepping back and uh, kind of understanding, right, you know, where has my new meal pattern uh, kind of formulated here? You know, what have I done uh, over the last kind of 10 days? You know, we we're, most of us now, even if you're non-symptomatic, have kind of been isolated for you know, 10 days, two weeks, whatever. So you might have settled into three meals a day or you might have settled into, you know, five or six more meals a day. Um, so I think see see that off first. Understand where you're kind of naturally stopping for, for food and drink and things like that. And then obviously you can start to move around what's on the plate. So I think um, I might have mentioned this last time I came on the show, but it's that three T's kind of thing. You've got the The total amount of food, it doesn't have to be down to the calorie, but you can obviously think, okay, um, now my days are quite similar. There might not be a huge difference between a weekday and a weekend day because maybe I'm not going out and eating as much as I used to. So roughly think about that. And then obviously the type of food on the plate, that's where um, when you were talking about there and asking me, how can I change my intake and and, and kind of support if if I'm moving less, you can then think, okay, how can I keep keep fuller for longer but then reduce the amount of, of of overall energy and calories on the plate and that's where you could just change things say uh, a midday meal or an evening meal you could look at some kind of diy salad and that might be a, a lower calorie option that could still keep you satiated you could look at obviously lo- loads of uh, vegetables and things that grow above the ground you could look at protein sources from um, plants and things too you could look at things like uh, you know your beans 
or your chickpeas, your lentils, your quinoa, things that, you know, people are starting to stockpile now. Um, that usually most people working with me don't tend to self-report that they overeat. Um, and, you know, they're quite filling. They're obviously nutrient dense. And, you know, that can help you manage uh, how much you're eating on a day where you're moving less. But then if you're adding exercise sessions or uh, you've grabbed one of these wearables and you realize, actually, I'm only doing five, six thousand steps a day and you up it, you know, you're pacing around your house and you're doing a morning training session, then that's where you might want to pull in some of uh, the foods where, um, you know, they hold a bit more energy. So you're looking at your oats, you're looking at your root vegetables, you know, like you said there, mate, people are, are stockpiling pasta. You might bring those into your to your main meals. So you're, you're deliberately changing the type of food. Um, so that's something you can you can really work off. So think about the total how many meals are you eating a day, roughly, what does a day look like, and then look into the type, you know, how are you creating your your meals, what's going into them, and just pick a simple macronutrient like carbohydrates and think, actually, how can I change things up on a day where maybe I'm not moving as much, I could look at the rice, the pasta, the oats, the cereal, um, any of the kind of sweet foods, and I might change those more to, you know, the, the beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, quinoa, the vegetables, the salads, things like that. No, no, I think that's a great point. And I love your your idea that just that sort of getting an idea of your your general picture of activity, both we're going to talk baseline, like, you know, your, your daily steps and, you know, walking up and down stairs, whatever it may be. So where was your baseline before this situation? Uh, where was your training before this situation? And where was your basic you know how many meals a day are you having with snacks and everything else like that if you would just map those out basically like you suggest okay now mm. how different is it well where's my daily baseline activity is that up or down where's my training activity is that up or down and where's my what am i eating now i'm settling into a routine is that up or down and i think by taking a very simple look at those three areas you could probably quite quickly see you know whether you were heading into Actually, you know, if I extrapolate this for three months, I can quite clearly see I'm probably eating 30% more calories than I'm expending or, or whatever it may be without yeah. having to get too technical about it. But I think that's a, that's a great point that we are at a stage now where people are settling into this new normal for however long it may be and will have an idea of what, what their food looks like. And probably, I don't know, do you find this about talking to people about nutrition? Um, Clearly, there's a lot of information out there and, you know, there's so many areas and detail we can go into. But often mm. at the root of a problem that people are looking to solve, they often know what the problem is themselves. And do you think if people were to sort of just take a simple step back and look at it and go, well, I'm eating too much or I'm not eating enough, I'm, I'm undertrained or I'm overtrained, baseline, they'd probably have a feel for it. Do you find that? Yeah, definitely. And I think... Part, you know, part of my role, I, I see, I see people. Obviously, I don't see them at the moment. I speak to them on the phone, um, and you know, some some people do want professional advice because um, they they need they need the how. You know, they have a bit of decision fatigue. They've been reading a lot. Uh, they might have had some some you know test results back around their health. There's there's no medical issues, but they think actually, you know, I'm, I might want to change uh, blood sugar, blood pressure. Uh, lipid panel cholesterol things through food um, but then yeah it's interesting mate other people they may come to me because uh, they, they want to address the why um, and that's interesting you know they have the how they want to talk things through they're trying to uh, you know a, a eliminate barriers and, and they want to take someone on just purely from an accountability point of view um, and, and others you know they, they do need a bit of both they want to reduce decision fatigue so they need they need a bit of how or they might have a bit of a gap in like, right, I've signed up for um, some kind of race for charity or I, I want to get a lot leaner or I want to get healthier. I'm not quite sure, you know, how to cut through the nutritional noise. But others, you know, they do want to have that conversation because um, they, they know what they're doing. But, you know, they haven't they haven't quite centered in on, on their why, really. Um, and, you know, it, it sometimes takes time for them to tease it out and you know sometimes I'll have those conversations with people so it is interesting it is interesting but I think to your to your previous point about 
people stepping back and, and looking into things you know you can listening to this you can definitely take control and you don't always have to seek a you know a nutrition professional um, for everything and I know that's a kind of kick in the teeth to, to my business and obviously what I do but I think it's that kind of quote that I've heard banded around a few times um, and, and it kind of comes around you know be the best at the things that take no talent at all and I think yes nutrition and, and nutrition science it is dynamic we're learning more you can't underplay how the body works and understanding how to keep someone well and, and balance levels but like you said it, it doesn't take any talent or any specific skills to just put a bit of a schedule together or just write a food diary and reflect on what you're actually doing here and now um, and often I do find people do come we do that together we have a session and then I never hear from them again. And really, that's that's all they needed. Um, and, and sometimes I'm like, great, you know, so it's interesting. No, I, I think you're absolutely right, because it's you know, at that basic level, um, you know, just looking at, you know, how is energy expenditure changed? How has calorie intake changed from, you know, now that people are in a more of a home environment and the, the lockdown or... Lockdown, I think, is an unpleasant word, but let's just say uh, enjoying yeah. ourselves indoors more is, is going on, on a lot more. Um, that is, is something you can, you know, for people who want expert guidance on it, great, go for it. Um, that can be very valuable. But if you can get that gut feel picture of yourself, then you can start to fine tune and you're like one step ahead to bring in an expert like yourself to now really, if you really want to drill down on it, but actually cutting through the core of that base noise you could probably do with a bit of reflection a pen and a piece of paper and then you're in a really strong position to bring in you know okay this is what I want to focus down on that's where people need to reach out and you know that's where I think you can really come into your own because these people are already becoming educated themselves which which makes it probably even easier for you to be able to share the message and to be able to help them because there's got to be an element of collaboration right yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, if I can put you on the spot for a second, I know it's your show, but you you, you must get customers reaching out um, and, and asking questions. And obviously, the good thing is about uh, your products and what you do, you're quite specific about here's what's in them, here's how they can help you in that kind of endurance and, and performance environment. Obviously, everything is whole food based. So, you know, health goes goes in there without question. But what what kind of common themes come out in in your kind of uh, inbox when people are saying, look, I've ordered this, um, but you know, how's it going to help? Or uh, I've read this. Like, do you have to cut through some nutritional noise with customers and clients? I mean, there's definitely some. I have to say, the the shift in at early days. There was a lot of, you know, what, what, how much protein should I be consuming? How often should I take a gel? Uh, how many liters of sports drink do I need? And that's a blessing and a curse of, of the sort of ordinary sports nutrition industry. And, and I'd say that from what, what we do um, at 33 Fuel very much stands on, on the shoulders of giants. If it wasn't for huge companies like Maxi Muscle Science in Sport and whatever, absolutely banging out well this is how this is what carbs do and how they work and this is how many you need protein those macronutrient building blocks are in place and we're ready to go beyond that um that's what we do and that's what's so nice to see the shift now that's where a lot of our customers are going the questions become uh, quite a lot beyond that because people are kind of comfortable with that baseline um they're now looking to improve the quality of that baseline and the quality of the sources they get it from but then you get into the micronutrient element where, as you say, you're adding health to that performance package, which is the one thing that's missing from, from mainstream and ordinary products. They, they'll deliver your macronutrient requirements, but they're not necessarily going to long term or even short term be that, be that good for you. Um, so I guess common questions tend to come around um, uh, anti-inflammatories. Immune is, is a big one at the moment. Um, recipes for mixing up our, our energy gels as in different ways uh, different fluids that you can use for them other than water um, and then we get to the ones that I really specifically enjoy uh, both with amateur and elite athletes 
where you start planning out race days and you know whether it's whether it's motor races we're dealing with premiership footballers people doing an Ironman well what should I put in transition and just breaking down how the menu of products would would work within that and definitely one area I think we've been very different to ordinary nutrition companies because I, I, it was one thing I never enjoyed as, as a customer of theirs years back was the prescriptive nature that everything had to revolve around their products. I mean, I don't see that anyone should be in the same product. If you're doing, particularly if you're doing a long endurance event, like you don't want to eat the same thing for 24 hours. Like why not bring in bananas, bring in water, bring in homemade rice cakes, bring in bags of salted nuts, you know, mix it up. It's like, it's going to be like a picnic. It doesn't have to be all around our, our products, but then let's build them in where they suit. So I don't know that that's kind of, it's fairly broad ranging, but your question definitely made me realize that the nature of our questions has evolved so much in the last five years from simple, how many macros of carb stroke protein do I need to how can I implement and fine tune this race strategy and, you know, more, more specific, but definitely more of an understanding around the ingredients we have. I mean, when we started out, people hardly even knew what a chia seed was. Now you can buy them in Sainsbury's and they're in everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think going back to your point about, about racing and uh, consuming supplements, it's that concept of palate fatigue. Um, and I think it is about having combinations. And, you know, I've, I've certainly in, in the last couple of years, you know, had, had some of your, some of your products stashed in. Then, like you said, use what the aid station has, bring some fruit, bring some kind of, you know, D DIY like energy drinks and things. And, um, yeah, I know obviously this is more towards the performance end in terms of uh, nutrition conversations. But, um, you know, if you are listening to this and you are getting into more exercise, especially endurance side, you're like, what palate fatigue, um, you know, you wait until it happens to you because you'll start off. Everything will be sweet. Then you want to go to savory or you'll start in savory and then hours later you'll be looking for sweets. So um, I think if you do get to that level, then, you know, you're probably working really hard. You're training hard and, and hopefully, you know, you're enjoying whatever you're doing in the, in, in the outdoors and things. Obviously, eventually when we get back to, to normal life. But, um, yeah, mate, that's interesting. And I think it's, yeah, it just shows, like you said, how, how that the kind of uh, the average person or even like you said, the kind of athlete who's, who's looking after their own performance, you know, they, they, they want to know more now than just the kind of rigid guidelines and things that are kind of thrown out um, from these large companies or, or, you know, these kind of headlines on um, nutrition and performance around some of the kind of big races like London marathon and all these kind of things, you know, when it actually goes into an article and you just read the standard stuff, people are looking for more. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Uh I love that term. It's not what, uh, one I've come across before, but it, it sums it up so neatly. Palate fatigue. That's brilliant. I have a few of those. Yeah, there's like, obviously, I mentioned decision fatigue earlier, got palate fatigue, um, and the kind of fuel for, fuel for the work required or fuel for function. Uh, yeah, they're kind of uh, terms that we use in the kind of performance nutrition or sports nutrition space. So, yeah, and it's, uh, it's about just taking that kind of research and translating it into practice, and then people hopefully start to understand that a bit more but obviously as you know it's interesting from especially the endurance side and and energy levels even just getting things in the mouth even if you can't swallow them i know this is going in and on a tangent but we've got some interesting research around how that triggers um you know receptors in the brain and it will reduce perceived exertion fatigue it will increase endurance um so so yeah even just holding things in the mouth or mouth swilling with certain kind of uh drinks and things like that they make a massive difference um so so yeah it's interesting and i think um in the latest thing i did in in january you know i just do these kind of things for fun obviously not competing at any level but i, I had one of a chunk of one of your bars i know this is a bit gross but kind of up in the gums and and just kind of kept there because I'd, i i was hours in I, I couldn't swallow anything, but just the the body's perception of this being in there and the flavours and the tastes and the textures, they will resonate with your brain and, and, and you know, it, it does help. So, uh, um, yeah, you're in, you're in interesting states in, in certain races and when you're kind of outdoors, but, you know, having things with you, um, obviously, you know, we know they help in the research, but it's, it's, it's about choosing a variety of foods and supplements and products that kind of work well for you, really. That, that's amazing. Um, I mean, I, I, 
I think I'm long past the point of believing I, I've, I've heard it all with our products, but you know, certainly in the early days when we had Italian cyclists telling us they were putting coffee in the energy gel, we were like, hang on, that's a great idea. We'd never thought of anything other than water in the early days. Um, but certainly you are the first person I've come across using part, pieces of our energy bars, almost like chewing tobacco wedged up in the gum there. That's a great tip. I love it. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, the, I think if you don't hold anything, is, um, if you're not used to something in your mouth and running or cycling, you don't want to choke. I think the classic example would be having having something with carbohydrates in it as a drink and then kind of swilling and spitting. Obviously, don't recommend that indoors. Um, and obviously, don't recommend doing it on, uh, you know, a fellow race participant or any crowds or anything like that. Um, but, you know, if you're listening to this and you're into these kind of gnarly outdoor activities and adventure races and things, you usually have quite a lot of time on your own. Um, and, you know, they're, they're sometimes, um, you know, interesting tools and tactics to use, really. Um, so, yeah, it's something to definitely think about. And we're, we're learning more about that, you know, that how how your kind of perception and even just something in the mouth and you don't necessarily swallow it, will you know, will contribute to aiding performance. So it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting stuff, really interesting stuff. No, no, no that, that's absolutely brilliant. And, and I realise we're, we're a little off the topic of immune function here, but I'm just, uh, it's also interesting just bouncing around these different areas of nutrition and performance. Um, to to bring, bring ourselves back down to uh, to the immune side of things, I mean, we've got, we've got sunlight, we've got hydration, we've got a broad variety of fruit and veg, into the diet and we've got management of calories in versus new levels of expenditure out wherever they may have settled are there any other pillars that you'd be looking to put in place to to help that immune function whether they're quick wins simple food swaps or or any other tools that you like Mm. i think protein is an important one and you know some some listeners might roll in their eyes you know they're into using the gym and they've heard about the importance of protein for muscle building and all that kind of thing. But um, again, it's, it's absolute cornerstone for, from our, for our immune function. And obviously if you are training, yes, you know, you're breaking down tissue, you want to help recovery of muscles, etc. cetera. But um, you know, protein intake is important for the immune system too. And often some people that I speak to, they might just be a portion or two away of, of getting you know a certain amount of protein that, that might help them with um you know their bodily needs and to support their performance levels um so again it's something to think about you know i'm not advising everyone goes out and does this but if you know you're weighing kilos um you can start to kind of be a little bit more prescriptive and and once you found that uh, amount in grams then obviously you can you can focus on kind of real foods to meet that so uh, say if i was taking someone uh, who's who's quite active, you know, training in the endurance kind of type realm. You know, I might look at anywhere between 1.2, 1.6 kind of grams per kilo of body weight of protein a day, really, and that might obviously help with the muscular recovery um, and and uh, that side of things. But then also from the immune function side of things, that's really important as well. So I'm not saying everyone races out and goes and eats to that level, but I think um, again. Think about the the types of foods that are rich in protein in your diet. If you've never maybe uh, started to look at uh, the the types of protein uh, rich foods that you eat in your diet, that's a perfect place to start. Um, and then yeah, look at look at the amount of protein. Look at the back of packets or uh, look look things up um, you know online. Obviously, all these supermarket brands and things have all their nutritional value and things online. I know your products and things are very clear on that. Um, and it's you know it, it could be the case that if you're someone that's energy levels aren't quite there you're not you're, you're doing your training sessions you're not quite recovering or like you said you just don't feel like your immune system is 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 on point um you know if you've done the fruit and vegetable thing your, your sleep's there you're eating enough calories you know the protein could be an interesting one and it, and it might be you know a portion of beans or um you know a little bit extra brown rice or oats or some nut butters that can bring you up a few grams or you know a, a protein powder or something like that really um and you know that extra maybe 10 15 20 grams a day could make a, a big difference to supporting immune function no that, that's that's a really 
interesting and, and such a valid point that at a time like this, effectively, now is not the time to have any of your bases uncovered. This is this is not about, you know, people will pay, we've all done it, you know, you put a lot of attention into your race focus or, or your event or your competition when it comes around. Um, everything is prepped down from, from travel to sleep to nutrition plan to pacing to whatever, you know, everything's there. We need to put an element of that onto our daily lives now but it's not about fine tuning for this one day of high performance it's about covering those bases strongly every day carbs for the effort protein for recovery broad variety of micronutrients to support you know immune function reduce inflammation take out free radicals all of that stuff and back it up with plenty of hydration and good sleep definitely and i think like you said if you step back and 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 look and, and being a food diary or thinking about a certain macronutrient um you know start there uh, work on a certain aspect of your day you know is it the morning routine you need to get into is it uh the snacks you need to get a hold of uh, is it the hydration or is it actually when i close my laptop at 5 30 everything goes to pop between 5 30 and, and you know 9 or 10 p.m so i think it's uh it's understanding some of the principles, you know, take away some of the things obviously we've discussed, mate, but then also, um, you know, look at areas in the day that you think you need to improve first. Um, because obviously you can, you, you can get lost in a long list of, um, you know, this, this uh, area of conversation, this immuno nutrition kind of area of conversation, but um, actually it might just be a certain part of the day that you need to square away to begin with and then everything else will fall into place. So, Going there from the, the the morning side of things, let's just pick one area. I'd be interested to know, you know, for you now that you're a, a, a country gent out there in in Warwickshire, you know, you, you've had the uproot, you've got out of central London, you're down in the countryside, you, you're settled in there. Um, what does a, a sort of morning routine of of nutrition or, and or exercise look for you? How do you break those things up from kind of getting up? until let's say the end of breakfast what does that look like for you um well yeah again it depends on the day um if i'm doing something at the moment the activity is trying to do an hour or less um so if i get out on feet then i've kind of practiced that ability to to wake up and i don't always necessarily have breakfast before i'll, I'll do a morning run um but hy hydration for me is like i spoke about at the, st at the start of the kind of call um, really important. So first thing I do is that um, large glass of water straight off the bat um, and I come downstairs. It's, again, it's a little bit of a geeky thing, but I'm always barefoot until I put my socks and shoes on to run um, in the morning because I, I tend to just really move around the toes, the, the feet. I know it sounds silly, but um, if I'm going out there kind of whatever on the roads or the trails, um, you know, it's easy, especially if it's not that warm, to slip socks, slippers, whatever on. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm barefoot, I'm moving around, I'm drinking a large glass of water. Um, and then it depends, you know, sometimes I'm, I might have a coffee or something before, just black. Um, but other times if, if I gulp that down, I find and then I start running, you know, it doesn't always necessarily sit that well. So it might be a herbal tea or something like that. Um, but, you know, if... if if, if I wasn't obviously here and, and, you know, I was only kind of going out for 30 to 40 minutes of a run, if I was doing something a little bit longer, um, then that, you know, that might come in maybe uh, late, late morning or middle of the day. Um, and then that's where breakfast and things may come in. And, uh, yeah, I have a few meals and things that I'll use. And, and similar to what you were saying, mate, about kind of increasing or decreasing the amount of kind of protein or carbohydrates in in meals if you have a few options set in then you can obviously kind of turn the tap and add more or you can bring things uh back a little bit so anything from your your kind of porridge simple kind of oats and and uh, real big fan of those frozen berries and then just having the the nuts and seeds and things and changing different types and things they can come in and out so it's the same the same kind of meal but you can change obviously the options of the fruits and you can change the different types of fats you could look at nut butters and things so i'm saying sorry that's that's what i tend to do um and and then yeah if, if it's some somewhere where i've got 
uh, more time for breakfast and then I am training later, then I, then I might increase the, the kind of protein and, and, the, and the fat in that breakfast um, because I know it will, it will give me a bit more time for, for my body to kind of digest it. So it could be, you know, it could be one of your protein shakes with, with water or I might add more nut butter um, or I might have some eggs and things like that with it and or some Greek yogurt. So I'll kind of bring in different protein options there. Um, so yes, yeah, it obviously it obviously sounds quite organised, but really it's just uh, depending on what I'm doing, I'll dispense a certain way um, of of obviously fueling myself or deliberately not fueling myself depending on what I'm doing. But the things that are consistent are always the the large glass of water and then something hot. Um, it might be caffeinated, it might not. The kind of the bare feet, and then obviously I've got a kind of movement routine and things, and then I'll go off on my run and then. Um, I'm finding at the moment if I keep if I can keep the intensity moderate um, you know some people wear these uh, wearables and they're aware of their kind of like heart rate and training zones and things obviously um, if I then come back in shower and um, then I might have that coffee or you know that other large glass of water and then get onto my work I feel like I'm you know totally zoned in so I think that is if we can be positive about this situation if you, if you do have time to get some morning movement in and some sunlight um, I don't know about you, mate. I'm I'm finding that I'm you know I'm more energised in the morning, and I'm getting a lot more of my my kind of harder tasks, because I'd call them all my kind of like key thinking. I'm tending to do now between that you know that nine and one or two p.m. zone. Um, so so yeah, that that morning routine will, will change depending on the day. Um, but at the moment, it uh, yeah always involves hydration, something warm, and, and a lot of time, maybe half an hour, forty minutes barefoot. Sounds sounds good. I think those those you've got to have those key pieces in place, and I think the more that you play around with any of these routines, you you can have you know, you got three or four go to breakfasts, and you can scale them up, scale them down, or, or schedule things around depending on when the training's going. But I, I love the point that this is a time, like we said earlier, of it's it's a lot of hardship, and there's going to be some terrible things out there. You know, some people are not going to come through this, but we can't ignore the fact that the majority of people, the huge majority of people, are going to come out of this in great shape. Well, are going to come out of this okay with, without the virus, or they're going to get it and they're going to get through it. And mm. for that majority, um, this is a huge opportunity to do so much more and to come out stronger, you know, to analyze those things about how do I want to change my breakfast or you know, if you're not commuting an hour a day, well, there's a bit more training time. There's a bit more time to read or, or listen to a podcast or, I mean, let's say this goes on for a few months. You can learn a language in that time. And I'm not saying everyone should, but what I'm saying is the we have been handed. It's not a way we would ever have chosen to be handed it, but we've all been handed a great opportunity to kind of reappraise things and, and come back stronger. And I think your core foundational points all are things that people can build a really great foundation on to do that. Mm. And I think it's, you know, obviously I'm more aware because of my day to discuss people, you know, it's, I kind of earn a living by talking about nutrition, hydration, not sleep as often, but that comes in. Um, but, you know, I kind of really love to live by that tiered system of, okay, if you've got, what, what do you do when you've got the time, you're organised, you've got that top tier so maybe for me, you know, I've got the time to make the fresh breakfast from scratch. I've got the time for the mobility, the, the mindfulness, the hydration, all that kind of stuff. But then under that, you have that that tier two. So maybe actually you've, you've squared some breakfast away the night before. You've looked at overnight oats or pancakes or whatever you've made. So you're not having to make fresh. Um, you may be tweaking the, the type of training that you're doing or whatever there. And then even under that, you know, you might have got got the training and things in, but actually you didn't make the food the night before. You don't have time to make it fresh. So what can you grab? Um, like you said, they're looking at your fruits or putting together some kind of whole food shake or, um, you know, grabbing a decent whole foods bar. So, um, yeah, there's, you know, it's definitely no judgment on my end, but I think it's about being flexible. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes I'm not always in tier one. Um, at the moment I am because I have the time, you know, we're not going anywhere um, and, uh, you know, most things are on the phone or video call so you can schedule them. 
But then, you know, when we do get back to normal life, whatever that means for you, you know, li- living in tier three doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. But, you know, what is your quick and easy option down there? And, and how can you support yourself down there too? So, um, you know, that's a really interesting thing for me, the ebb and the flow, um, being flexible, kind of uh, getting through that, but having different options on different days. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, I think there's, there's so much that, to take away from this, but the, the basics I'll see is just, it's keeping those cores covered. Um, and I do like your point that, you know, tier one, as in the, the times when you can execute everything to perfection, exactly the way you want it, you have total control of your schedule and bang, off you go. Um, down to tier three, where perhaps you're, you're totally at the mercy of, you know, you're traveling for work, you've got three kids, you need to take them to 15 different activities. And I'm quite aware that for, for people who have kids, then, you know, being at home is going to be a mixed blessing. You're trying to work and you also want to look after your kids who are maybe dealing with homeschooling. There's going to be a lot of pressures in there. But within this new normal, I think once we, you know, we've all taken travel time out of our days. Um, there is no commute, physical meetings. No, nope, they're not happening either. So that's given us all back some free time and a time where you can put in some basic practices glass of water when you wake up love that get some good sleep get out and move every day and try and keep a keep a broad varied diet in there and be aware that you're to fuel for what you need to do Uh, make sure you're not over or under within the basic parameters and then if you want to fine tune well that would be a good time for people to come and check out some more of your resources maybe matt so if people are looking to find you where where are the best places they can get hold of you um, I think for, for my, my day-to-day stuff, my, my Instagram's Matt Gardner Nutrition. Um, I, I do tend to keep it separate. So obviously, if, if you're reaching out and, and you have any questions or you kind of want to know what what I do, I'll, I'll signpost you to my email address and we can kind of discuss um, things there. But I just, I like the mix. I kind of, I'll basically film the food um, and and what I do outside of work really. So when I'm outdoors, when I'm in the kitchen and and it's a nice disconnect because obviously I spend the day job um, getting into things and, um, you know, keeping things quite specific and, and, and personal. So when I am in the kitchen and kind of producing content, it's just more of a bit of fun really. Um, So, so I think that's something to go and check out. Um, I've got a podcast too. We've we've done an episode on there together. Um, you know, a, a, again, you guys help me out with the podcast, which is great. Um, so people can check that out. That's called Big Feed Up HQ. Um, and the plan with that originally, I said I'd do a hundred episodes. I'm two or three away from that now, and and I'm narrowing in more on nutrition. Um, in the past, it hasn't just been about nutrition. I've kind of got basically people that. I've found interesting on um, and we've had conversations obviously you know we connected over it as well um, so yeah there are a couple of things to check out the, the kind of Instagram and the and the uh, the podcast and then obviously you know if, if you have any questions then drop me a line um, and yeah happy to discuss from there really. So, sounds great we, we will have links to all of those in there the uh, your Instagram at Matt Garden Nutrition podcast uh, big feed up hq and uh, don't worry you don't have to uh, listen to the episode with me and 33 fuel but of course if people wanted to they they'd be more than welcome to there there are other episodes on there uh, nearly 100 of them now quite clearly so um no that, where that's are you amazing. how many episodes have you done mate on on on, on this pod that is a good question and uh, that is an answer i will have to get back to you on because <laughs> Sorry. In the, in the delights of, of running and building a business, um, without doing some web research, I really couldn't tell you because the number of different things going on, and you, you've learned the same thing run, running your own gig, the number of things going on right now are absolutely off the charts. And uh, I'm really happy that we managed to block the time in and, and make sure this was done. This is kind of one of the anchors in my day where mm. the rest of it is, you know, you wake up with a plan and five things in the plan have changed before 10 a.m. So... Uh, yeah, that's a long way of me saying I'm not exactly sure. It's quite a lot, and it's a lot more than I ever thought we'd get to when we first started out doing these very casually about a year or so ago. Yeah. No, it's really good, and I think, you know, yes, the basics, um, but we've looked at a few things, and especially we've, we've given a few kind of recommendations where you can go away, you can look at it from a body weight level, and you can start to personalise kind of protein intake and hydration 
Um, and yeah, in the future, happy to kind of come back on and, and discuss micronutrients too, because I think once you've got some of those things sorted and, and like you said there, kind of health is wealth and, um, you know, what can you do to really look under the hoods? You know, these things do make a difference. And yes, you know, finding variety um, from a nutrition point of view, once you started to square that away, you know, it, it takes a lot of effort. And sometimes, you know, how can you find that? that tiered system and if you aren't in that tier one or that tier two all the time you know what can you use that are cornerstones to rely on really and i know you know you haven't you haven't kind of asked me to say this or anything like that um before the pod but i think that's how we connected because you know when i'm running things and training and 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 looking for small variable benefits you know around uh whole food bars around greens powders that are just going to help cover bases you know going to give you an extra 10, 20 grams of protein a day and are, are, are going to give you uh, B vitamins, a little bit of extra vitamin C, um, a little bit of extra kind of magnesium. You know, these are things that um, you might not always have the brown rice, the avocados, um, you know, all those things are at your disposal. So, um, yeah, I think it's, um, mate, it's great to have you guys continuing to produce the products really because um you know the 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 bars and the and the greens powders obviously we discussed the gels i've, I've used in the past and um, honestly they've been game changers for me so um no i really appreciate it no, 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 lovely to hear it and I, it was i think you're right that that was the initial connection we we share uh, a similar it's not just outlook it's it's a passion um for making the world of nutrition a, a better and a more accessible place and you know, I'd like to think with our products that people don't even really have to be that bothered about ingredients. They're just an enjoyable product that slots out where their other one went. And even if you're not bothered about ingredients, that's almost the biggest win for us because the likes of, of you and I, and I'm sure a lot of people listening, we're very focused in on this and, and that's brilliant. We'll serve, serve people like that all day long. But when we have people now who are buying the greens powder or the bars just because they like them and it's an easy win, they're not even thinking about it, but the benefit they get over other things they could have had is huge. And, and that, that sort of extension, the mission is, is really nice. And um, it's so nice to be able to build friendships and relationships like with yourself, the way we have done. I, I look forward to seeing you uh, back, in, uh, back in the Maida Vale neighborhood soon. And who knows, we might be able to do something crazy like actually go out for a run and be less than two meters apart. Hey, that would be absolutely fantastic. But cheers back on. And um, yeah, hopefully, if you listen to this, you, you got some value from it. And um, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. And um, yeah, happy happy to discuss a bit more about the kind of practical application of your, of your products and things too, if anyone has any questions around that. Yeah, I really couldn't recommend that enough to all of you, actually. Anyone who's looking to drill down, fine tune, whether it's you know, race prep, weight loss, weight gain, whatever your specific goals are. Uh, Matt would be a great person to reach out to. You will find all of his details in the show notes below. Um, so go check him out and check out the Big Feed Up HQ podcast as well. Um, Matt, thank you for your time. Great seeing you. Good man. Thanks again. So there you have it, folks. Matt Gardner. I hope you enjoyed that one. I know I certainly did. Um, not much to say now here other than if there's anything you're looking for in the show notes, well, of course, you will find them in the links below. Uh, if you're looking for the best in natural sports nutrition, then you do need to come by and see us at 33fuel.com. And as I mentioned earlier, all supply lines are open, deliveries are open, we are well stocked up in the warehouse, we have everything covered. So uh, whatever you need, it's available for safe delivery, direct to your door as ever. There's even free shipping on all UK orders, no changes to any of that. Um, so look, thank you for joining us on this show. Let us know what you thought of it in the notes below. And don't forget to go check Matt out. Check out his podcast, Big Feed Up HQ. Check him out on Instagram or his website. Again, all the links are below. So until next time, thanks for joining.